Hey guys, how's it going? So today we have both trucks just loaded up with gorgeous stuff to take over to our friend's house to plant. This is the house that we have been at a couple of times throughout the spring, uh, adding a few things to their brand new landscape. It's a beautiful new home. They finished maybe a year or two ago, and then they've been working on infrastructure for the landscape, you know, irrigation, grass, uh, the uh, edging for the flower beds, and then they had a plan drawn up for the landscape. So we have been working off of the plan a little bit, making minor adjustments as, as we have kind of gone along as you normally have to do, but we're working on shrubs today. I mean, we have butterfly bushes, spirea, coral berries, button bush, nine barks. There's a false spirea up there. Limelight prime hydrangeas, a cheddar. Cheddar, what are you doing in here? What if you would have stayed in there when we took off? <laughs> My goodness. Let's check out what's in that one. Spring Grove Arborvita, more hydrangeas, Arctic Fire Dogwoods, our starter fertilizer, and enough space to stop at the garden center. I want to pick out a tree for one spot in their flower bed. It's at the corner. If you caught the other videos that we did there, we planted two black lace elderberries, I think, not three, just two. And I wanted to put a green, something with green leaves, uh, in between those two black lace elderberries. Now, this flower bed is enormous and it needs something with the tree structure, not just a large shrub. It needs to have that tree structure. So uh, anyway, we left enough space to do that. It's been a glorious morning. I think the overcast is gonna end though. Like it's been spitting rain a little bit. It's supposed to get to 96 today. We were kind of hoping it would, the overcast would maintain, but I think we're gonna have sun here in a minute. Okay, so we just need to head down to the garden center first. You can't come with us, Cheddar. Sorry, dude. Let's go find a tree. All right, we've got a lot to choose from here. Okay, there are locust red buds. They've already got red buds, so I think we'll stay away from that. Honestly, some kind of birch would be beautiful. But probably not a heritage. That gets too big. Yeah, 30 foot spread. But look, oh my, look at the bark on that thing. Spring snow crab, a little bit big. I'm thinking something not round in shape, something a little bit more pyramidal. Okay, cruising into the back here. Lots of trees back here. Quans and cherry, a little bit big. Shoot, it's a pretty structure. Yoshino, a little big. Starlight crab apple, that might work. 20 foot spread. This is going to be at least 10 feet away from the house, easily. See, not a Zelkova, probably. What's a Winter King Hawthorn? Oh, that's two, that's got a, that's the opposite shape that we wanna look for here. River birch. 35 foot spread, royal frost, 25 foot. That's a nice pointy tree right there. What is this? A Parkland pillar birch. Oh, 40 feet tall by six to seven feet wide, really? What a wonderful hedge tree. We need something a little bit wider than that. Yeah, I think the autumn brilliance, let's take this one. We have arrived. I thought we would take just a quick peek at the stuff up here because I can see some really beautiful color going on. The Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo. That is so striking. And the Sweet Romance Lavender looks good. You can see the orange smoothie daylilies are starting to get some color. Hydrangea, is that a, which one did we put? Little Lime Punch right here maybe? This side looking awesome too. Also, the red buds, look at these. Do you remember last time I was looking at them? and wondering if it was gonna be worth <laughs> waiting to see if they were gonna break dormancy. They sure got with it. They're looking good. Incredibles up front here looking great, full of color. Oh my goodness. Awesome, look at this. It's just coming right along, you guys. We have the Twombly's Red Sentinel, Japanese maple here in the corner and some boxwoods. So thankful that this double file viburnum made it through the intense wind uh, that we dealt with the day we actually planted it. It looks really good. Boxwoods, there's a black lace elderberry right there, kind of near where we're gonna put the tree. They're doing an excellent job with the care of these plants. These Incredibles right here we found at Franz Witte, um, and they were a little bit behind these right here. These were much more full when we put them in, but these will catch up. And then the Calicanthus, pretty good overall. That one's got a bud, that one has a bloom, and that one does have growth. So that just needs to be trimmed back down to the new growth. Beautiful blooms. 
we've got the strong is it strong druid um you i think that's the name of it right i cannot remember the name of that you Another calycanthus and then all the hookera looking awesome. Oh, I am so encouraged. I just love it when things look like they rooted in and you know, first year it can be a little bit testy. Um, you never really know. Sometimes you deal with burn, um, you can deal with shock and then it's usually the second year that they start looking like pretty healthy. Um, so I'm really happy. We've got our tree here and our other plants. This is the plan I am working off of. I've showed you this before in previous videos. Uh, we are not doing the planting nearly as t intense as this plan has it. The, this plan has a ton of perennials in it, um, which just I think are going to be a little bit more maintenance than our friends want to really put in. They have a very active uh, life. They've got kids and sports and all kinds of things. So I don't really want to put in a lot of things that are going to create extra maintenance. So I think this is going to probably be our last push this season um, to put in some shrubs and things. And then I think they may work on putting in perennials that they really like and that have maintenance, like the maintenance level that they want. I think the plan of attack here, Erin, I think I'll just go place everything okay. and then we could do a tour in the end. Uh oh, we're starting to get some wind. Yeah. Of course. It's okay, the breeze feels nice. It does feel nice. <laughs> yep, so I think we're just gonna get after this. I'll give you a walkthrough tour in the end. We'll talk about some of the details of each one of these plants. It should be a really nice afternoon. We got everything except for the Spring Grove Arborvitas planted today, which is totally fine. I need to go back down to Andrews to the garden center uh, to pick up a blue spruce. I want to plant a weeping blue spruce like we just planted near our weeping willow in the back. I'll show you the area. It'll be perfect for a blue evergreen accent. So we'll just come back and kind of focus on evergreen interests next. Just look at this side view. We got quite a bit in the ground today. This is where we started with a Mr. Mustard Fall Spirea. Now I actually have a couple of these at home to put in our garden. I love the texture of these. I love the bloom. So they bloom these really pretty kind of fluffy panicles in the summertime. But the coolest part about this shrub, and hopefully we can find a picture, when the new growth emerges in the spring, it's a like yellow, pink, apricot, just a really vibrant color. And then it mellows out to this green, but a really neat texture for the summer. And then of course the bloom. So it's a zone two through seven and grows about three by three. So it's kind of a perfect shrub to tuck in kind of between this um, viburnum here. And then there's some boxwood and then we'll come in later with hostas and stuff right in this area. And this is a weird corner because it's like the cutoff for light. Um, the, this side of the house faces, let me think, northwest, but it does get nailed with the sun in the afternoon to this corner, like to pretty much right here. Got a cloud covering the sun at the moment. Next, we have a grouping of double play doozy spireas. 
The cool thing about this spirea, I mean, it stays compact, like three by three again, maybe like two and a half to three feet tall and wide, uh, but they don't produce seeds. So they will continue to bloom throughout the season. Like there's new buds forming up right in here. Yeah, right over here, right there. So it will continue to have color throughout the season instead of just blooming one time like a lot of spireas do. The new growth is also a really pretty vibrant red color and they're just a really nice tough shrub. Now the zone information, two through, no, three through eight on that one. Oh, two to four feet tall and wide. Oh. And then over here, I do have another grouping of the double play doozies right here, kind of right in front of the black lace elderberry, which will fill in this space. But I put a Miss Violet Budley, a butterfly bush right here. I initially set a Miss Ruby right here, but the color of pink of the Miss Ruby with the color of pink of the doozies, it just wasn't jiving. So I swapped and put the purple one here. This one just got done blooming. It's first flush of bloom, so it'll start blooming here again shortly. But this one grows about four to five feet tall and wide. It'll just kind of fill in this space here. And then we've got a nice big area for perennials. Moving this direction, this corner changed quite a lot. Oh, now this tree was very weird to plant because the trunk itself, we wanted to make sure that that was straight, but then it has a little bit of a crook, which we on purpose faced away from the house. The wind actually comes this direction. So it will kind of correct it, I'm guessing. But this tree only has a 15 foot spread and we are, at least 15 feet away from the side of the house, but that means seven and a half feet on center. So it'll go seven and a half feet this direction, seven and a half feet this direction. So it won't even come close to touching the house at maturity, which is perfect, but we'll get the height. We'll get the 20 feet by 15. It'll just be a beautiful uh, interest right here and it will help kind of provide some big time structure, which I think, uh, you know, a home like this, this size needs to have some big structure around it. I've got three Arctic Fire Red dogwoods around the base. The reason why I used these back here is once this service berry is large, it will be providing quite a bit of shade for this space, especially right behind it because the sun will come in this way. And the dogwoods are incredibly shade tolerant. So I thought, well, they can do full sun, they can do quite a bit of shade. So I think that's gonna be a very versatile shrub. They'll also provide some really beautiful bright red winter color. They grow here, they really do well. Uh, the tag says three to five feet tall and wide. I imagine they'll get to their five by five size. So they'll really fill in this space. And then a drift of, oh, another stat on this one. So zone four blooms white in the spring followed by edible berries which we've talked about before, it's already done, but birds really like it. It's really good for uh, wildlife forage. And then this one must've been stressed in the can because it's already showing a little bit of its fall color here. So that happens often. Miss Ruby Budlia, we just showed this one. It's a Lo and Behold series uh, in a video not long ago at our own house in our garden. Two and a half feet, I believe is the max size on this one. We should probably check. It's been a while since I planted those. Yep, two and a half feet tall and wide, zone five through nine. I thought that these would be a really pretty low maintenance drift in this space. Again, we have another space right here, which I think would be a really pretty area to put some gra low grasses in this space, maybe like some echinacea in here. And then there's another black lace elderberry that will fill in this space here. We've got another big area. Now this whole side here, this face is west. It gets baked with the sun and we do have quite a bit of space left. So this was just a start. It looks like a lot of green shrubs, but it's one of those things that I often have to remind my, myself when I'm in my own garden that, you know, sometimes you get your hands on one type of plant and you know in the end, well, I'm gonna put an evergreen here and I'm gonna put a grass structure here. Uh, and so you kind of have to envision the whole picture, especially because this black lace elderberry will be so large and it's a very dark, like almost black color. So that'll contrast, these are the limelight primes, which I think are gonna be gorgeous here. They grow four to six feet tall and wide. I didn't wanna put anything too big because there are some windows right here. I don't think this one really matters in this spot. This one's probably good because it's right next to the wall. Anyway, um, yeah, four to six feet tall and wide, beautiful white panicles that turn color. So, well, you can see here on the tag, limelight so like kind of that creamy white green color 
and they age to a gorgeous pink for fall and that will look beautiful up against this house. Then we've got this whole area up here for some fun things. I did a couple of groupings. I had a little bit of a, this was my one area where I messed with it for a little while. I brought seven of these Proudberry coral berries. So these are the ones that grow about four by four. And right now they're in bloom or starting to bloom, very quite insignificant in the bloom department, but the pink berries that this plant has like late summer and fall and through good part of the winter. It's kind of so pretty right here. Plus I love the structure. It's kind of a blue green color. And I did groupings of three. So a grouping here and a grouping right here. I initially kind of had a swoop here. This is where I think a weeping blue evergreen will be really nice. It will kind of break the shrubs apart. I think we should put a grass right in here. Oh, here comes the sun. So grass in here, blue evergreen, another grass. And then we've got this huge area still. But I've got to figure out because this is a big bank of windows that they like to, I'm, I'm guessing, look out. I mean, the view is beautiful. So I don't want to do anything too massive. I want to give this a little bit of thought. On the plan, it just had a huge bank of hydrangeas. And I think, unless we did a very short hydrangea, which we could absolutely do, um, I just want to make sure we get this right here and don't do too much to impede the view. So we have that whole space behind the coral berries and then kind of reaching all the way around. Um, Limelight Primes, I did another grouping here, kind of in the corner, and then right here and here, and a Miss Ruby. So that's the pink I was talking about before. This one grows four to five feet tall and wide. I did leave this space because they were thinking they may want a small tree right in here, which I think would be nice to kind of be a wind block to their patio area. Okay, the rest is over here. These are doing really well. So double play doozy right here. And then we've got the fine line buckthorn, fine line improved buckthorn here with the Italian ice, right? Yeah, Italian ice rose, look at that. So pretty, they're doing great. And then we just came in with some low maintenance stuff on this side because they're just not on this side of the house very much. Uh, we've got some button bush, this is a sugar shack. They have the white spherical blooms that are kind of fuzzy. You can see that this one's got some blooms like some buds ready to start here. And I love the glossy green. I thought it would be a very pretty contrast to the very fine foliage of the fine line to have that. I mean, they're both green, but they look very, very different from one another. These grow three to four feet tall and wide. Just a really pretty, very tough shrub. I only recently have had experience with this button bush. At first, when I looked at that plant, I thought, this is this one's not going to do that well in our area. You know how sometimes you do that. You look at like I look at rhododendrons and I'm like, nope, they're not going to survive and they don't here. But this one has surprised me. Um, it I have one on the west side of our house along the brick walkway kind of by an urn. And this spring, though, I thought that it had died and I was kind of like, well, I tried it. It didn't work. And so I tried to yank it out by hand and it was just really rooted in and I couldn't get it up, up out of the ground, even though I, I mean, I tried with all my might. And then uh, I kind of forgot about it, came by in a couple of weeks, it still hadn't broke dormancy, so I tried to pull it out again and I still couldn't, and then I kind of forgot about it again. <laughs> and the next time I looked at it, totally full of leaves. Either somebody came in, planted a brand new one, or these are just incredibly late to break dormancy. And it's one of the most gorgeous, fresh looking shrubs that I have over there. I'm gonna plant more. And then summer wine nine barks right in this area, and these can just be let to do their thing. I mean, they'll do well up against this hot side of the house. Um, and they've got more of a deep green, kind of a deep greenish purple with red stems. These did get a little bit scorched <laughs> uh, under our care, we told them. They'll be fine, just keep them watered. And once they, you know, have a chance to settle in and push some new leaves, they'll uh, look really good. Uh, they do bloom beautifully. Gorgeous, kind of white, creamy white pink blooms. So pretty. The pink chiffon hibiscus we planted earlier on are doing great. And then this is the last little corner. We did two more of the button bush and one more of the Miss Ruby butterfly bush. And I really think, even though on the plan it shows a ton of perennials in this space, I really don't think this is a space they're gonna wanna do a bunch of perennials because I don't know. I mean, let these shrubs grow, fill in. It's gonna be really full. I know it doesn't look as full, especially because the hibiscus haven't put on their, you know, huge size. And, you know, this one will get five by five. But if you just let this type of, you know, these types of shrubs fill in, it's gonna be gorgeous. It will be very low maintenance and there will be no fuss in this space, which I think 
it's good to have areas like that in every garden. I had to come out front and get another battery. My camera keeps shutting off due to the heat out here. It doesn't feel too bad when the sun is behind a cloud. So when we come back, we'll be focusing on this outer area quite a bit. The area where the birch trees went in, the three Norway spruce, there's three great big oaks in the back. We're gonna be popping the spring grove arborvitas because they grow like 15 to 20 feet wide. And we've got, I think 17, 16 or 17 to put in here. So they'll go either on this side or the berm. Honestly, we could like pop some back in here or on the other side of the house. The opportunities for planting around this garden are pretty endless at this point. It's really fun. So anyway, that is it for today's video. I'm really happy to have been able to come and add a little bit more interest in the flower beds right around the house, at least before it gets really hot. We have some pretty warm temps coming up next week. And honestly, we keep planting even through the heat. I find as long as you keep things well watered, um, you're pretty good. Now we do like right before we we planted today. We took everything out of the trucks. I strung out one of their hoses and I watered everything really well. I think uh, introducing the root ball, like you would add water into the hole if you want to do that, but having a really wet root ball to start off with, I think just helps kind of ease them into their new home. So we plant them when the root ball's wet and then we water them in really, really well. And pretty much they get water every single day, um, at least a little bit throughout the really hot part of the season. And then we can kind of start backing off when it cools off uh, late summer, early fall. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video.